Welcome, welcome, welcome back everyone. Your loyal Captain Gear 100 is back with another video for you guys today. And for this video here, this is something very special that I specifically wanted to do for the longest time. I looked it up off of YouTube and while there are some videos about it, there's not really well finished concepts on it. So I want to be the one who finishes it. So by you guys clicking on this title, you guys know my plan is to turn Deku into, well, it's to give Deku one, um, <clears throat> Make Deku into the reincarnation of one of the baddest mo mo fuckers on the to have ever fucking lived in a lot of anime, and this is a pretty underrated character uh, in my opinion that we should see a lot more of, like in in the actual canon story. I mean, well, he is canon, but we only get to see him for like very brief moments. But anyway, you guys do know who I'm talking about. That's right. You clicking on this video means what if Deku was the reincarnation of Bardock, the baddest motherfucking Saiyan to have ever fucking lived. I love goddamn Bardock as a character, and I feel like we should have gotten to see a lot more, than, more of him than what was well, actually shown. Hopefully he'll be canon again. Hopefully we'll see a lot more of Bardock, because I did watch the movie, like the movies, because uh, Lord Chilled or something, the manga, other things of Bardock as well, but they aren't really canon to the story, they're just fan-made mangas and stuff like that. But it's nice to think about what Bardock could have actually been. But making Deku the reincarnation of Bardock is a whole different story. It's something that can actually be explored. Now, with that being said, let's get into it. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Cue the intro! The last we ever see of Bardock is when he is fighting Frieza. Trying to defend his home planet. The planet of the Saiyan race, powering up his riot ja his final riot javelin that he is ever going to do. <sighs> Bardock says that this will change everything, and he's hoping it does. As he conjures up his final po power in his hand, the final bit that he has, but for a brief moment, a golden aura surrounds Bardock, as his hair would light up, and then the final moment. He would become a Super Saiyan, just very briefly, but the power would not stay. It would just, All he would do is power up his Riot Javelin and throw it toward Frieza's uh, Supernova, which <clears throat> maybe could have stopped it, but it wasn't enough. Bardock was, was sadly killed in its blast. Hold on a sec, guys. As Bardock fires off his last beam that he had left, He's pushing back with as much force as he can. The supernova only getting closer. He's trying as hard as he possibly can. But it's inevitable. As he gets consumed by the blast. The last bits he sees is his son Kakarot. Later fighting Frieza. I'm going impl to implement a little bit of Xenoverse 2 into, into this as well. Also he sees him fighting Golden Frieza. And then eventually Black Frieza. Everything Bardock could see. As he gives off one final smile, <laughs> that smile meant, my son's gonna waste your ass. As he finally gives his last cry into existence. As we all know that his legendary line, as he screams for his son one final time. And then, nothing. Nothing anymore. As now, we cut to nothing but emptiness. Where Bardock would appear, as Bardock was wondering how is he still alive after this, he looks around. He calls for Gine, his son Raditz, his other son Kakarot. He's wondering what's going on, what's happening right now. And Bardock like, finally realizes that he's dead. He failed. He couldn't... Defeat Frieza, and now, now what's going to happen? As Bardock has no idea what's going on, as he can't move, it, as he can't move, he feels like so he so heavy, and yet he feels like he's fa he's falling. As Bardock, like he manages to force his head to turn around, as he sees he's falling back into the mu into the multiverse again. No, not just that. He's going through a wormhole. What's going on? As Bardock is looking around, he can see it. The times. 
what's going on throughout his entire life, throughout Kakarot's life. But then he's being pulled out of there. Bardock is seeing right now the other existences of other animes, other universes, other realities. What is going on? And now it's time for Bardock to join a different reality. Bardock wishes to go back to his world, but he's no longer tied to that world. His, his vessel has been destroyed, and there is no coming back. Only now, a reset button. But Bardock's me memories, his whole consciousness should have been wiped. But I guess his willpower is just too strong. Him being a Saiyan, <laughs> I guess he's just too strong to be gone. So as he falls into another reality, Bardock is going deeper and deeper into the wormhole until he sees a, a white light at the end of it. And Bardock realizes that that's where he's going. As, he, as now, Bardock is able to move this time as he turns himself around. As Bardock, like, realizing that, well, now uh, the beam of light is so bright that he doesn't even know where he's going. As now, as he, um... Hold on. As he reaches out to that light, Bardock, Bardock is realizing he's being reborn again. But where this time? Whatever, uh, the, whatever the, uh, the, uni the multiverse holds for him, he's ready for it. He won't fail uh, whatever world befalls him like he failed his last one. He can't. He must get stronger. He has to get stronger. So whenever he can't... So, Bardock braces for what, what's about to come. As the light, as now, Bardock, he embraces the light that, sh that coats over his body. No resistance, no anything. He just knows that whatever comes next, he will make the most of it. As when Bardock opens his eyes again, <clears throat> he's looking at a man. As he would say, it's a boy. What? And Bardock, well, would not know what's happening right now. What the? What's happening? As finally, uh, can can I see him? As now they would, uh, ooh, this, this would be great. As he, they would be turned up, as basically Bardock would see a green-haired woman. What? What is going on? Like, oh, that's like, he looks just like, he looks just like you. He sure does. What are you going to name him? Hmm. Izuku. Izuku Midoriya. What? That's not my name. Like, what? That's not... Wait. What? What's going on? Who am I? As Bardock... Okay, what's happening right now is this. Now, let me explain to you guys one thing. Now, I know this is one of Deku was the re reincarnation of Bardock. But I wanted to do a little bit of something different here that not many people really do. I know what reincarnation is supposed to be. Deku is supposed to be like, well, his uh, Bardock's spirit lived on. But instead, I want to change that a little bit. I want Bardock to be, well, to live on. But I want him to possess the newfound skills that he has in this world. Bardock is going to have to relearn how to use everything once again. But, well, it's not completely Bardock. It is still Izuka Midoriya. As Bardock's consciousness does fade into this newfound child that he's, that he's been, well, uh, well, forced into. Bardock is realizing that, well, he's fading, like, into this consciousness, into nothingness. <laughs> but Bardock accepts his voyage into eternity. He's not supposed to be in this world. And he shouldn't exist here. So, at the, at the very least, the kid can, ga can gain his experience. Use this power wisely, kid. It's yours. As Bardock now fades into the eternal blackness of the consciousness. As now Izuka Midoriya is fully fledged here. He has white hair, green eyes, freckles, and a tail. Wait, a tail? And, like, the father would be asking about that. And the doctor would just saying maybe it's a part of his quirk. I mean, there is that rare, the rare few of the population that are born with their quirks, so I guess that this must be a part of him. Like, mm, well, there's a lot of the populations that have ta like that have tails, but our quirks have nothing to do with having a tail. 
Sir, it's not uncommon for the ch for the child to have a quirk that's not related to his parents. It's actually a lot more common than you may think. Uh, oh well then. So, now, you guys might be wondering, what is Deku like? Deku still has his heroic heart, but he isn't exactly a pushover. He is still a, like, a, well, it's basically like raising a baby Saiyan after all. Still a fighter and a rowdy child underneath all of that. Deku here would not know, uh, well, okay, let's just cut to early Deku's life. Early in his life, Deku would be a rowdy child, always causing trouble and just literally, well, Deku would grow up, like, enjoy, and training and fighting. That's all this thing would consist of. Deku would enjoy fi fighting. Also, he has the bar, also he has the Bardock hair. In, in case you guys want to know, I do want to change it up a little bit so it's not completely like that, but it's not that bad. This is the Bardock that Deku is matching. Just the hair, though. But it's also white hair. Just because, you know, Deku... Okay, I would have made it black hair as, uh, as, in, the, as in the jeans. But, you know, I want, but I want to change it up. To, I want to make it unique. You, you know, guys? I always got to make my what-ifs unique. So, in this one, Deku has white hair, green eyes with freckles. So, it's all, it's all right now. He's all good. But, okay, still, moving on. Deku would always be like a rowdy child. Like, whenever Deku was growing up, he would, like, always try to be independent in whatever he did. And, well, like, since Saiyan kids, like, grow up in, like, a very brutal type of nature, Deku would grow up, like, as a, well, kind of as a brute. Of course, Deku has an, um, all around, Deku would grow up as a, as, as a hard ass. Literally, as a Saiyan would treat their own child. But it's not like, uh, Inko and Hasashi treated him bad. Well, Hasashi, aka All for One, left. All for One left. Inko would always treat his son with kindness and everything, and Deku would be kind to his mom back, because he's not a full-blooded Saiyan or anything. Even, well, even though, we, well, actually he is, reincarnation and what and whatnot, but still, Deku would be nice to his mom, but to everybody else, he would kind of be a, a he would be very aggressive. Deku would always fight, no matter what, and he would always have a brute, have a brute style. Not really fighting with any grace or anything, just fighting to win. That's Deku's thing, fight to win. And he would be very strong, stronger than a lot of the other kids would give him credit for. Until he met this one girl named Katsumi Bakugo. Yep, that's right, guys. Female Bakugo's the shit for this one. Because, you know, Saiyans only like strong women, so I gotta put that strong woman aspect th there. I can't really think of anybody else, because everyone else is just either too nice or too naive. So, what, what, what do I say, guys? I gotta stick with the Saiyan ritual. So, with this being a thing, female Bakugo would, well, Deku would always be kind of like a hard ass, and, oh lord. Uh, yeah, with Deku having pride in sh on his side, man, I, there is no, he, being just as prideful, if not more prideful than Bakugo here, Deku would not give up, like, at all, as to any, as to anything. And you guys already know what, uh, De what Deku's power would be, and in case you guys don't know, let me show you guys real quick. It would be key manipulation. I mean, every character in Dragon Ball Z has this. But you know, guys, I want to dive deeper into this and explore it more. Because I feel like it was so under... Key is so underutilized. They only use it as, you know, well, what we see. Energy blast, all that, yada, yada, yada. But I feel like we, we are not getting as much as we should be getting. So, I'm going to dive very deep into all this. While still keeping the Saiyan uh, physiology within it. So, the power to manipulate the flow of latent energy that is present in the physical body. Yeah. So, moving on. The user can create, shape, manipulate key, a life force energy that exists in all beings. By learning to harness this inner latent energy, they can gain superhuman capabilities and use them in cases of extreme combat. Yep. Yep, cool. Applica applications. So yeah, you guys uh, just pause and read right here because I don't feel like doing it.
yeah, users of Key Dragon Ball series. So there you guys go. Just so that way you guys can't say, oh, they don't do this stuff. No, you guys see it from the from the fandom, from the wiki. It's been done. I'm gonna dive deeper into this stuff while also keeping the same physiology the same in here. So let's move on. So Bakugo and, and like Izuku in, in this universe, they would be best friends, like an Im immediate type of thing, because well, Deku would already have his have his quirk right right here, but they have no idea what to call it because he he has a tail. And he seems to, well, possess other ability, other types of abilities. Deku just wants to call his quirk Saiyan. Like, Saiyan? Why Saiyan? Like, so wait, are you, you mean you're saying something? No. And Deku tells them how to spell it. S-A-I-Y-A-N. Saiyan. Like, what? Like, Deku just says, I don't know, it just feels right. So A sense of famili familiarity. So they would write that down. And so, with all these abilities and Deku having a quirk, and him being very popular and strong, of course, people would hype Deku up to be a hero. And Deku still does have that hero heart to fight for justice and all that stuff there. Like I said, I mean, he may be a brute and all that type of stuff, but Deku is still a, very, a good guy on the inside. And Bakugo would take an interest in Deku because, well, he has a quirk, and he's strong. But just when Bakugo got her quirk, people started hyping her up because her quirk was flashy and everything. But Deku wasn't finna be left in the dust. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, nah, nah, nah. That ain't Deku's style. He, he says no matter how strong Katsu Katsumi gets, he was always going to be stronger. Like, you want to bet? Yeah. As Deku would hold out his, hold out his fist, and, and Bakugo would clash it with her own fist. Like, we'll see about that, I Izuku. Izuku. Yeah. So, yeah, liking only the strong woman thing very, fits very well into this AU here, and I really like it. I, I want to know how you guys might actually react to this stuff here, because it's really nice. Growing up, like, it really shows that Deku was always, like, very, very goddamn strong. But the more he trained, like, the older he got. Like, and then Deku realized it, it doesn't matter if you're a low-class anybody. You can make your quirk into a strong one if you just train. That even though deems worthless can become great warriors. Yeah. But who cares? Deku doesn't really care about that low class stuff. Wait, why is he even thinking about that? That's not even supposed to be his thoughts. Huh. Whatever. So, okay. Now to talk about how Deku got that cheek scar- That iconic cheek, cheek scar that Bardock has. So, this would go- Deku- This would be a day where Deku took way too far in his training a little bit. Because now, like, whenever him and my, him and his mom would go on vacation, Deku would take to fighting wild animals just to even just to get a little bit stronger, just to show that he really is that that the top dog, and he's crazy out there. And this would happen when they were in the. Uh, okay, well, they would be taking a trip. Uh, they're um, hmm, I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, I got it. So they're on a vacation where they went to uh, like the Amazon type, the Amazon forest. And while Deku had saw a type, a, ooh, oh yeah, this is going to be good. He actually saw, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> okay, there we go, I'm good. He saw a panther, and just because the panther was like intimidating, Deku had decided to fight back. Getting into a full-on brawl with the panther, and actually killing it, but not without leaving him a few scars. And the deepest scar he ever gotten was on his cheek, but that's okay, because he looks badass, and it ties his whole look together. Deku was absolutely fine with it, saying, "What's a what's a hero without his without his scars?" And this one makes him look look all look more intimidating and more cool. But Inko is like very very worried for him because, well, Jesus Christ, look, just look at him. But you ain't got to worry about him, Inko. He's gonna be just fine. So the more Deku would grow up th throughout his entire childhood, the more he realized he could do much. Deku could fly. He could well shoot energy beams and, and, and all of that. And he can even charge his energy to make him even stronger to power up his moves. Deku just needs to get stronger because, well, like, uh, doing a simple workout routine isn't enough. Deku needs to fight somebody strong. And even though this is going to be going against a lot of things, Deku needs help here. He wants to be stronger. He wants to protect the people he cares about. He needs to protect everyone from evil. Deku doesn't know why he's so passionate about this, but it makes sense that way. Oh yeah. Also, guys, uh, because I just I feel like doing it. How Deku got his like well red bandana like Bardock had gotten it, it it, it matched like this. So let me find something real quick. Now the way this would go, it would be in Deku's like uh going about to go in his teen years for his tenth birthday. In, like when Deku was training h harder and harder, you know Katsumi, 
uh, Mitsuki and Masaru would be would be there, and Deku's friends would be there because they made a lot of friends over the years. And this this gift is from Katsumi here. It's how Deku got his red he got his red bandana here or headband, whatever you guys want to call it. So whenever that would happen, Katsumi like Katsumi would say this is a like this is for him. And when Deku pulled out the red bandana, he felt a sense of familiar familiarity here. And wow, this would just be amazing. As like Masaru and Miski would be happy as well. Katsumi was nervous because she thought Deku was going to hate it. But nope, he wrapped it around the top of his forehead and tied it. How do I how do I look? Awesome. Like you look uh you look so great, Izuku. As Deku would look himself in the mirror. Oh yeah, I look I look even better. Yeah, I'll never I'm never going to I'm never taking this is my look now. I'm never taking this is a part of my hero costume. I'm never taking this off. Like Izuku, you're going to have to. Well, Obviously, when I shower and things like that, but still, I'm never, I'm never taking this off. Every time you see me, I'll be wearing it. And like, no, that's literally what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep wearing this for as long as I live now. And Deku wasn't joking. Every time you saw him outside the house, he would be wearing that damn thing. It tied his whole look together, and Deku's going to look awesome. Also, he's not going to be wearing the, you know, the Saiyan armor Bardock is going to wear. I'm going to give him something better. So that way, you know, I want to keep uh, doing this here. So, okay, um... So, because of the training thing, Deku asked Katsumi to train with him because he wants to get stronger to protect everyone. And Bakugo would say, like, oh, what, you're not strong enough on your own? I mean, Deku just makes the point that he could he can easily beat Bakugo. I mean, he said, no, you can't, and, oh, God, you know that where this would lead to. It would eventually, uh, you know, lead up to a fight, you guys. But um, si during situations uh, like, like that, Deku would, would end up beating Bakugo. And, I mean, okay, he doesn't have the... This many grievous injuries, but you know, it's still uh, a fight and he has a few scratches on him. You see what I mean? How can we be great heroes if we're gonna if we're gonna keep getting beat like this? We have to get stronger, Katsumi. You wanna be the number one eventually, huh? And you can't even beat me? Hmm. That's 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 pathetic there. But so, as he holds out his hand, let's train together. Like we'll get so strong that nobody will be able to beat us. Yeah, <laughs> you're goddamn right. But when Katsumi grabs his hand, the next time we fight, I'll win. Yeah, I look forward to it. So now those two start training together. And having an equal rival in, within each other, pushing themselves farther, Bakugo would advance a lot more than she would in the actual, you know, canon story. So, okay, now it's the end of the high school years because, like I said, 10, you know, about to go in his teens or whatever. Well, 10, not really. But still, moving on from the situation, uh, we're going to continue that. So, finally, we cut to the end of uh, uh, end of high school. The teacher comes in and says the same shtick of how Bakugo wants to go to UA. Well, you know, and Midoriya wants to go to UA, too. Cool. But nobody laughs at him this time because they know that Deku is actually very strong. Oh, yeah, in case you guys are worried about the great ape situation, um, don't worry. Uh, okay, I'll ex let me. Okay, I'm going to explain how that's, how that's going to be worked on. Because, well, crazy enough, Deku um, had a natural instinct to not look at the full moon. Because he was about to sometimes, but he never actually did. And Deku w w once, one time wants to go against his instincts to see what would happen. Thank oh my lord, okay. And you guys already know what's about to happen. So, but don't worry, Deku's about to go to a secluded area before he does stuff like that. But anyway, moving on from the situation. So... Uh, moving on, uh, at the end of the school day, Deku already knows what he's going to do. Deku is still smart, by the way. He still analyzes hero te fighting techniques and everything. All right, guys, sorry about that. Yeah, like I said, Deku still analyzes heroes' fighting capabilities, and, like, he copies them as well. Deku knows how to fight. He's been to many dojos, masters, and everything. So Deku knows, like, how to fight. And he's and he's developed some moves, like the Kamehameha. Huh? You know, You know, guys, you know? Come on, guys, you should have known I was going to pull something like this eventually. It was bound to happen at one point. But Deku still strives for, for more power. Don't worry, guys, I'm going to give him, uh, like, another boosting technique later on in the future. Because you guys know, I got to do it at one point. I just have to. I have to! So, with that being said, the next whole year of training is going to consist of Deku pushing himself beyond his limits and everything on that situation. Until we can cut to the uh, first day... Uh, well, the entrance exam. I almost said first day of UA. He hasn't even gone to the entrance exam yet. Blech. Sorry about that, guys. All right, moving on. So, 
what happens now is going to be, well, oh lord, this is crazy. So, finally, after a long time coming, oh, if you guys want to know what levels they are, Bakugo currently is at the level of where they would be at the uh, internship, because having such a strong partner in Deku slash Bardock is absolutely insane and essential for your growth potential. So Deku having all of this here is very, very great. So have the internship, like, bruh. And Deku's very strong in his own right. Having a very... Okay, so power levels in this situation, the normal average human would have one. And, okay, I'm sorry to tell you guys this, guys, but, you know, my, you know damn well My Hero Academia cannot compare to Dragon Ball Z when it comes to power levels. Krillin would easily, like, no-diff that entire, that entire verse. And that's what's sad about it. So, I'm gonna say their power levels aren't really in the thousands. They would most likely be in the... They would probably be in the hundreds. Maybe, like, barely, like, one... one in the thousands. Like, 5,000 or 10,000. I know damn... you Because you guys know damn well... Because, okay, most people can probably get as a multi-city level. Maybe even a country level. But Dragon Ball Z can, are literally planetary, uh, like, level of threats. Ain't nobody is that goddamn strong. So, the least somebody can probably be in My Hero Academia... I'm a, I'm gonna be I'm being generous. All for one is probably like one it's probably fifty thousand. Yeah, fifty thousand. No, you know what? I'm gonna be even nicer. Probably a hundred thousand. And we got Frieza who's five hundred and thirty thousand in his base in his well first form. So come on. I'm not I'm not cutting any corners, guys. They're pro they're really powerful. Deku is extremely powerful because Bardock has a level has a power level of ten thousand. And with Deku constantly training and getting stronger, because, you know, you know, saying Zenkai boost and all that, he's definitely strong in his own right there. So I'm not pulling any punches when it comes to stuff like this. All right. All right. So let's move on. Entrance exam. Deku. OK, Deku is like I said, Deku is smart within his own right. So he knows exactly what to do. So with all that being said, we're good. All right. Combat exam. The, those robots stand absolutely zero fucking chance against this Deku. There's nothing that they can do. And... Like, the teacher seeing all of this, oh my gosh, it's not even a competition, man. It's utterly ridiculous. So, seeing these type of things happen, bruh, it's, mm -mm, it, it's, it's, it's sad. So, Nezu presses the button to call on the zero pointer, and Deku here, okay, hold on. You know what, I want to show it to you guys anyway. Deku would conjure up an, an uh, like, just a, a medium energy blast and blast the zero pointer. He blasted the zero pointer with this energy blast and it destroyed the whole freaking thing. Deku is strong, man. Very, very goddamn strong. Yeah, there ain't nothing nobody could do against this. So everybody being jaw dropped as Deku just flies down. They wonder who this guy is. As right now, guys, that's it for this video right here. Hope you guys did enjoy. Yeah, I know guys, this was a long wait for you all to get the second video out. I wanted to get a third one, but Nah, the third one is just going to be me live streaming GTA tonight. So, if you guys uh, like this, get this to 5 likes, and I will make a part 2 to this. I need to start upping the like goal. You know what, when we hit 300 likes, I'm going to start like upping the like goal to five t from 5 to 10. Because we got to hit more likes on this. I need you guys to show that you guys still like my videos, and still want to be a part of this family, and this channel, and whatnot. With that being said, y'all already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Peace, guys!